Hello. <laughs> Hello. So this is this is a, a little bit different uh, Riders Corner chat with Chaos Nova gang. Still just me and Nux. And uh, because Nux is, uh, I mean Dave's uh, mm -hmm. webcam refused to work, uh, we're we're doing this in game environment. Mm -hmm. And also, I burnt uh, I burnt myself down because the uh, all the games, the elements of keeping yourself alive, be became a little bit of distract, a bit of too much of a distraction mm -hmm. to keep the chat going. Of course, uh, now I need to keep uh, keep Nux alive because I think if we both die, then we just end up in the lobby. We mm. can we can't all be ghosts. Flowers here. Anyway, we have gathered here to uh, discuss uh, where we're at with the uh, editing seeker. Flowers here. Berries. Whoa, I turned the flower evil. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Can I still eat that? Dark petals. Um. It's probably gonna make you bonkers. Seas here, somebody in the dark. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I will stick by the fire. So basically we have worked through several chapters of Seeker in the meantime. I have attempted to record those sessions and uh, and uh, the footage turned out unusable because I had pushed up audio settings. So right now we have no record of uh, spoiler f uh, spoiler rich editing sessions of chapters I think uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 yeah, and 9. So we we've lost some of our our record, and it was great fun recording some of that as well. Indeed. Yeah. These were great discussions, great uh, uh, great thoughts. Mhm. Mm so it, it was it was a bummer to to lose all that, and and also. Just one of those things, though. I mean, yeah. Computers will be computers. <laughs> yeah, and also it turned out that uh, some of those uh, chapters in the middle needed a whole lot more uh, work than uh, than I had bargained for. I remember back in oh, 2015. <laughs> it's already. So back in the office in the woods. Uh, we got some of those chapters done uh, really fast, and for the time being, they they work fine. Mm -hmm. And now that we have improved the rest of the book so much, they no longer measure up. Like there are some logic holes, some plot holes, and uh, and uh, I think especially oh hello, <laughs> <laughs> especially in, in in chapter five, some things n no longer no longer made sense. Mm. Uh, so there were there were certain uh, things that we cut from uh, there was a little uh, little subplot thingy that we cut regarding uh, water regarding the uh, the main characters uh, resource management that uh, that we worked in uh, in uh, during the first editing editing uh, around haunt suspicious marble what's this hello haunt cobbler <laughs> so yes we uh, we ended up cutting some content and as a result uh, some other content no longer made sense so uh, uh, right now I am working through chapter 5 and 6 to make things make sense again <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah with the with the water thing um i think I, I said in that video it was just a case of trying to make tension yeah and uh, I, I think i think we can uh since uh okay this this uh 
chat is not meant to be completely it's not going to be so spoilerific as the editing sessions but i think uh, since we cut that part we can uh, we can explicitly say what was going on there yeah yeah so jewel uh there's basically a resource issue where she forgot to get water from the station mm -hmm. and uh it, it we thought about this for a little while and i think we tr we tried to make it work yeah, so uh, I seem to remember that the first time we even brought in uh, that little subplot thingy, it was to give her an ex uh, it was to give her an excuse to do something. Like we wanted, uh, we wanted the character to uh, to decide to not stay uh, awake but instead to enter stasis i think mm -hmm. was was the big idea yeah and we tried to sort of come up with reasons why why she would want to do that and and we came up with the idea that oh if she ran out of uh, water in the middle of uh, of her travels she would have to decide that oops it's a uh, it's an emergency and she needs to enter stasis immediately because entering stasis uh, according to our world building effectively uh, stop stops the living thing <laughs> mm -hmm. so so yes uh, i can't remember if the uh, if the dehydration issue was already in your first draft, or if we uh, if we completely came up with it during the the previous edits, but uh, but yeah, we forced that in, and uh, and now working on the material, now it sort of stood out. And uh, and the worst thing was that uh, I went after the uh, subplot with a blue marker because water, and uh, and I found out that the whole problematic issue itself was I don't know I I I, won't, I couldn't say word count wise but it was it was rather short like it was a short mention that. Oh, she forgot to do something. She she forgot to buy drinks, and then there was a short mention that she uh, felt uh, drowsy and and dehydrated. And the next point was that she she had to grab some water from the station or whatever. And cutting it basically changed nothing, <laughs> <laughs> except uh, except we ended up with a very stumpy. Uh, chapter 5 and also cutting that part revealed that we didn't have much content there to go on with but we needed some content and I felt yeah. good about removing the water thing because now it's not an unfulfilled storyline if yeah. that makes sense yeah. it, it, it's a, it, it was originally a non-issue yeah you know so I am making evil flowers here. <laughs> Not all flowers turn evil. Haunt killer beehive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. But yeah, in in removing that, the uh, the I know there's not a lot of material left. Well, there wasn't a lot of material mm. left in the chapter, but it gave more focus yes. to what material was left. So I think it was appropriate that we got rid of that. Yeah, I think with the uh, with some of the other materials, we actually achieved the same thing uh, already during the previous editing round, uh, because I remember removing a whole lot and replacing it with other things, and uh, I'm hoping that once we get past uh, chapter eight, so once we get uh, into quote unquote part two uh, territory. Uh, a lot of that work has already been done like a lot of the uh, first draft ideas that didn't work have been cut and uh, and a lot of the mm, s like even 
even if the material itself or even even if the particular content has been cut we do know what its purpose was and uh, and we have been replaced replacing it with something uh, something other to, to fulfill the same purpose mm -hmm. oh morning time where are you by the way uh, oh, the world map. that is a question <laughs> uh, I think I went south or no, south. you went you went east. I, yeah, southeast. I yeah, I, I went east for a ways and then went started heading uh -huh. further south. I think. Yeah, I think uh, main thing you want to do is you need to stay out of uh, water, otherwise uh, you should be fine. Okay. Let's see if I can catch up with you. So yes, this in a nutshell is what we have been doing with Seeker edits. On one hand, we have reviewed, we have reviewed, oh, <laughs> we have reviewed the material up until chapter nine, but uh, but we're working. I am working <laughs> 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 uh, more uh, more deeply with chapters uh, five and six right now. Oh, you are far, far, far. I've on the map. I've found it to a diagonal path, so mm -hmm. if you can find the path, I'm on that at some junction. <coughs> there are a lot of birds around me. Oh wait, is that you or is it me? Oh, it it could be that I was seeing myself on the map. Anyway. There are rabbits here. Font rabbit. There was a moment when we were recording the videos and we got to chapter. I'm gonna get this wrong. Chapter eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we had to read out for a specific character, Lenis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I don't usually when I do readings I don't usually do voices and that sort of thing. Uh, but in this case, Lenis. Lennis has got a voice, and it would be wrong not to use it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to re-record that again, definitely. In fact, we'll probably we'll probably go. We probably won't. We're not gonna do the editing chat mm -hmm. again. But I think the the reading out and recording it is definitely something that needs to needs to happen. Yes. From from where from where the video stopped working up to where we re where we caught it, and you know. Yeah, and I think uh, what we could do, this is not a promise, but uh, but more like thinking out loud, uh, what we could do is we could still read the mm, old version, or the unfinished version, because uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, reading the clean stuff is already a thing for a whole next phase. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we could uh, we could read those chapters in the state that they're in right now because we already did some edits there uh, on the go, and uh, and this means we we can uh, you know record the progress basically or or you know keep keep record of what we're doing. I like sense. um. I like the idea of having sort of a before and after comparison mm -hmm. as well. I think that's, that's not just to keep a record, but also to show, hey, this is where we came from, and mm -hmm. this is, after a lot of work, this is what we ended up with. And maybe if it's been through a couple of iterations, so you'd got, I'm going to I'm gonna call it Seeker Prime, like the very first draft chapter of Seeker. Mm -hmm. Um there'll be that version which would be like the v1 and then the version that we sort of released in part one i'm guessing that's sort of like a v2 and then what we end up with now is like the the third version mm -hmm. and that's that's the end of the progression unless we decide to remaster seeker but i don't uh, think we're going i don't think that's necessary I yeah think, no. uh, once once we're finished with this version then we're gonna leave it alone <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah unless we receive 
some very good uh, suggestions from somebody but those but but even even with very good suggestions we're only gonna address some some very specific things and not uh, not uh, rework the whole thing anymore like right now the the reworks are justified because it is still part of the work that was going on and uh, I would say that the material that we put out as part one uh, Haunt Eyebone, okay uh, <laughs> uh, we did, I mean it could be considered first edition but it could also be considered a glorified second draft mm -hmm. so, so that's why it's okay to keep working on it uh, but uh, the version that we're going to end up now is thoroughly examined, thoroughly scrutinized, thoroughly copywritten. So it is miles and miles and miles away from the version that we worked on in 2015. And that's, that's why I think uh, after, after we're done our thing with this one, it's time to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. There's an element of seeker fatigue as well. Oh yes. <laughs> um, I've recently been writing Split Personality 2 and for the longest time it was a big old struggle and if you'd like to see evidence of this struggle <laughs> there, is a f there is a forum post on the chaosnova.bb.com forum. Um, and uh, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's publicly visible though. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, well, yeah, no, that is a good point. Okay, so maybe that evidence isn't as available as I'm making out. Uh, perhaps I should move it to a public section. But basically, I was working on Split Personality 2, and nothing, it just wasn't clicking, like nothing mm -hmm. was working. And uh, and I, I went through about five or six versions of Split Personality 2 before I landed on the version I'm currently working on, and... I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's taken me about a week and a half, maybe, to get to the the final chapter, mm -hmm. basically, in the first draft of what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I don't... I, there's... It's... I mean, I've really enjoyed writing Split Personality 2. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had thorough, such good fun writing it. It's There's a lot of, you know, Rogue being a typical badass. And I think this is the point I, I was trying to make with the Seeker Fatigue. Going back and writing characters that you, you've been writing, but you've been writing sort of incorrectly, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, you haven't been doing them justice. They're not fulfilling what you remember of them as characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now in this version of Split Personality, there I'm feeling it. They're properly who they're supposed to be, um, and uh, it, it everything's just coming together nicely. So. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> oh. oh, and this is uh, when you when you say that uh, you you wrote the first draft in a week. Uh, this is how how many first drafts of split personality one have you worked on now <laughs> <laughs> well yeah this is it yeah because uh, so so this is this is not the case of uh by the way observe mm -hmm. oh nice <laughs> so this is this is not the case of uh reworking an existing first draft this is the case of creating a whole new first draft to mm -hmm. to continue an adventure and this might be going on a bit of a tangent here, but th th ignoring the fact that I didn't, I wasn't getting the characters right. Mm -hmm. There was also the whole thing with scale, and we had this mm -hmm. world-building discussion where I was like, "Oh, a city is being invaded by like this outside force," and and oh no, it wasn't the city; it was the whole planet. The whole planet was under attack by some invading force. Yeah, full and... frontal planetary attack. <laughs> yeah, and. The way we've sort of built up the Chaos Nova universe, like that's a very, very unlikely thing to happen. And there was there was the whole thing with scale. So in a further edit, I scaled it down to like a city, 
and it still didn't work. Like there were some good bits, and what I've done is I've taken the bits that I liked from the drafts, the six drafts, the five or six drafts of Street Fighter <laughs> Two, and I've sort of superimposed them into the new version. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bit of clunk, but they're the bits I was proudest of in the other drafts. So that's um, that's one of the things. I, I, there were certain things that I was like, this this fits here, mm -hmm. and other times it was sort of like, this sort of fits here. Uh, we'll see how this comes through when it comes to like the second draft. So, but I've had such good fun writing with personality too. There's a there's a problem though. I've I've discovered a trait. I'm gonna call it escalation. Mm -hmm. uh, and at one point, okay, so this is a bit spoilerific for Split Person 82, but all of this is very much likely to change. In the beginning, the convoy gets attacked and the ambassadors get kidnapped. Um, after uh, Fallon and Co. catch up and board the station that they're sort of being held on, um, the table and the leader of the guy who's kidnapped everyone sends his ship off like he keeps Fallon and that talking so that's like a second escalation right first escalation they've got the ambassadors second es escalation they're taken off and Fallon isn't in control of that situation anymore third escalation Fallon gets um, captured him Chris and Kimberland all get captured so we then warp back to Luna and Rogue who are on the ship they do their thing and they end up in a load of fights. The rear, the solar runner ends up having to board the ship, so they've got somewhere to move the ambassadors to. And a lot happens there. And then they they return to the station. And because Tayborn isn't getting his way, he's planted a bomb on the station, <laughs> which is a total escalate. There's no, there's no sense for him to do this okay. because his his whole deal is he doesn't want to cause casualties because then that puts him like if he starts going around killing people that puts him in a bad position negotiation wise for getting what he wants mm -hmm. like he knows that if he's offing people he's not going to get the outcome that he's after he's going to be seen as a criminal so him putting the bomb there is a total escalation that does not need to happen like there's no sense for it um and then as Everything's rounding up. As as Jasmine's capturing Table and as all that sort of shit's wrapping up, everything's sweet. And the the rogue has shielded the bomb, and her and Luna have been severely injured, but it's okay because you know Luna and Rogue, they're my precious babies. I'm not gonna <laughs> let them too serious. Um, yeah, that's bad writing right there. Um, but the um, I'm starving to death by the way. It's no no big deal. Um, yeah. but yeah, Seeds they. Here. Uh, but once once they're all sort of dispersing back to their ships and like um, everything's sweet d um, Fallon gets a call from Gurin and he's like one of the ambassadors has gone crazy and it turns out that the ambassador's taken Pepper hostage and he's like this was supposed to be a lot easier than this like Tayborn was supposed to ransom us off I was supposed to get half of the money from Tayborn for the ransom I slipped him the sort of um, convoy schedule and that kind of thing so it's sort of like a half inside job and it's just another total escalation so we've gone from bomb to hostage taking so it's kidnapping to bomb to hostage taking do you know what I mean it's just a total escalation yeah and so it's it like and then threat and <laughs> then more threat and then new threat and then yeah. and then and then yeah and that's I need and it's really hard to like I've come to the end of the escalation now but there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff in there that needs to be cut because it makes no sense and there's I've done I've noticed I do this really it's, it annoys me mm -hmm. because after I've written it I see what I'm doing mm -hmm. I, I point out the flaws in the story in character dialogue so the characters will say something like, oh, so why has he made this jump? This is such a huge jump, like he wasn't trying to kill anyone and now he's doing mm -hmm. this. And then the characters try to explain it. So Fallon mm -hmm. will be like, well, he had his back against the wall, he didn't have any options, you know what Tayborn's like, sort of thing. So but deep I, down you know that that's yeah. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Deep down I'm like, this is, this is terrible. This is justifying bad writing, basically. Barry's yeah. here. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at with split personality. <gasps> I made another evil flower. I've been picking. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> I should be saving this food and cooking it at night when there's a fire on the go. Oh look, 
Oh, um, I'm going to ignore that because that looks like the hornet's nest in in the attic in Estonia. So <laughs> well, all the fuck away from that because that thing terrifies me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, speaking about speaking of all the things that are wrong, that's where that's that's where you have to re remember the uh, what everybody's saying these days. Right, right, right. It's the first draft. It's gonna be shite, but that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's got a, a rhyming quality to it. Ooh. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I gave it a little thought. Oh. Optical sensors active. Oh, your feller. Ah, oh, okay. You made a fire. So yeah, uh, I think let's let's sum it up. Let's summarize. So. When it comes to Seeker, it's in the murky depth. We're in the murky depths of editing. Yep. I am. <laughs> you are, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and sometimes it means that I am rewriting certain things that no longer work, especially in the uh, in the light of this um, in the light of the new qualities that we have added to the I would say draft two point something so yes it is it is it is not yet the second edition but it is far from second draft now <laughs> and uh, and that has brought the sort of advanced quality to all the all the issues or like need to need to address those from an advanced level but uh, but uh, meanwhile while I am doing all that uh, Nux slash Dave is uh, is working on the next material and uh, and uh, needs to adhere to all the advice about just right. Mm -hmm. Hashtag just right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see that a lot. Uh, mm. How long have I been running the Twitter account now? About a month? Yeah. And uh, and some of the people I'm following are taking part in uh, NaNoWriMo uh, things and I often see tweets like just write never <laughs> mind never never don't think about it uh, it's it's your first draft just keep it going etc mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that uh, and sorry to sort of go off on a quick little tangent here but that is the thing and y you can say just write to somebody but mm -hmm. they don't really understand it until they do it themselves once they break through that yep. barrier of there's no intimidation of an empty page anymore. You're just putting words on the page. You've got yeah. an, you've you got an idea. Just just do it. But until you experience that for yourself, you don't realise how liberating it feels. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it really is just right. But you sort of need to discover that for yourself, and then it's like an exciting new boundary an authorship has written up, uh, has has started. You know, opened yeah. up. And uh, for overthinking, that's where editors come in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I'm gonna stop recording now. We have mm -hmm. we have some thoughts on record to yep. share. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been a little different uh, writer cows Nova writing corner chat. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I think we shall see in the next one and maybe some more uh, se secret behind the scenes thingies and so on and maybe some world building conversations I'm I'm gonna try to get some of those into our schedule as well mm -hmm. so bye see you soon